This being the 21st century, you can even tweet me at comment underscore press TV. Tonight we're going to deal with a very important subject. Where should the focus be to rid the world of nuclear weapons? There are two reasons for that. My reason is that next week, my own party, Respect, will begin a ban the bomb campaign. We say that the whole world should be rid of nuclear weapons, starting with Britain and starting with the Middle East. The Middle East should be a nuclear-free zone. And the second reason is this. I've been ruminating on the logic of the entire world being fixated on the Islamic Republic of Iran, which doesn't have any nuclear weapons, when there are 16,800 nuclear weapons in the world in the hands of other countries. How come the world has been led to the brink of a crisis with Iran, levying sanction after sanction, ostracizing, shunning Iran, when it doesn't have any nuclear weapons, doesn't want any nuclear weapons, has signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, is allowing regular inspections by the inspectors of the International Atomic Energy Agency, how come Iran is the focus of all this aggression, all these acts under law of war because an economic embargo, a quarantine, putting sanctions on people is, legally speaking, an act of war, when all around Iran there are literally thousands of nuclear weapons. Just on Iran's borders or in its neighborhood, never mind in the rest of the world. There are thousands of nuclear weapons in the region, but the most important and significant in this argument of those are the nuclear weapons in the possession of the Zionist state. Now the lowest figure, lowest figure that I could find for the number of illegally held nuclear weapons held by the Zionist state is 80. But the figure is almost certainly very much more. 25 years ago, Mordechai Vanunu, the whistleblower who worked amongst the nuclear weapons in the Negev desert at Demona, he told the Sunday Times, then a prestigious world newspaper, that Israel had in excess of 200 nuclear weapons. Now, if that figure is true, and Vanunu had taken pictures, drawings, plans of that nuclear arsenal, if they had in excess of 200 25 years ago, how many nuclear weapons does Israel have today? Now, there are two reasons to be concerned about that. The first is that Israel has a long history of breaking international law, of invading and occupying other people's territories. It has invaded and occupied Egypt. It has invaded and occupied Jordan. It has invaded and occupied Lebanon. It has invaded, occupied, and annexed illegally a part of Syria. So this is by any standards a rogue state, a reckless, lawless, lunatic state in possession of maybe hundreds of nuclear weapons. And the second reason for concern is that Israel refuses to sign the NPT, the Non-Proliferation Treaty. It wouldn't dream of allowing a single inspector ever to inspect their weaponry from the IAEA, from the United Nations, or from anybody at all. So we have a rogue, reckless state in possession of large numbers of nuclear weapons that refuses to regularize them, and there would be no disadvantage for them in doing so. You might argue it would make their security more assured. 
if the world knew for certain how many nuclear weapons they had. There is no reason why they wouldn't sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty if it were not the very real and present suspicion that they are busily adding to their nuclear arsenal, entirely in defiance of international law. But there are many, many others. I've got the list here. The United States, of course, has the biggest nuclear arsenal, 7,315 nuclear weapons. And that's a huge reduction, by the way, on what they used to have. They used to have almost 30,000 nuclear weapons. But these are big, powerful, world-ending, civilization-ending, human race-ending nuclear weapons. And of course, they're spread out all over the globe. Countries like Germany, countries like Turkey are the home to United States nuclear weapons. Others are circling the globe in submarines. Others are permanently on board aircraft that are flying all over the world. The United States has intercontinental ballistic missiles by the thousand. By the thousand. And this, as you might see on our video wall, is a cause, ought to be a cause, of real concern, especially when the United States is going around threatening people who don't have nuclear weapons. The U.S. started the global nuclear arms race. It's the only country that has ever used nuclear weapons. It killed 200,000 people in three days with two nuclear weapons at the end of the Second World War, dropping them, of course, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And it did so not for any military purpose, but for the purpose of armed propaganda, to send a message to the world that they should be terrified of the United States. Of course, the then Soviet Union quickly caught up, and it too has a huge number of nuclear weapons. 8,000 warheads was the second country to develop nuclear weapons. It has the largest arsenal of any country and is investing heavily in the modernization of its warheads and its delivery system. We hear in Britain, bankrupt Britain, that can't even keep its old age pensioners warm in the middle of this austerity winter, has found miraculously in an announcement just this week reported in the New Statesman magazine this week, another quarter of a billion pounds to be spent on our nuclear weapons. That's a quarter of a billion pounds that could have been spent on the accident and emergency uh, departments in Britain's hospitals that are breaking apart at the seams. And a crisis, an economic and social crisis, grips Britain, but it still has the money for hundreds upon hundreds of nuclear weapons. France has 300 nuclear weapons. China, 250 nuclear weapons. India, between 90 and 110 nuclear weapons. Pakistan, between 100 and 120 nuclear warheads. Israel, between 80 and 200 plus nuclear weapons. And North Korea has 10 nuclear weapons. That's why the United States will never invade North Korea and why they did invade Iraq because Iraq didn't have any weapons of mass destruction, but North Korea does. So, where should we start on this campaign to rid the world of nuclear weapons?